So you spoke about examples of singular or nationalistic narratives of history, and what are the alternatives to that kind of teaching for history? Uh, well, there are a few alternatives. One alternative is to study history through historical sources, to, to present historical sources to, to pupils and then to, to open the discussion. And the other, for example, is to put different narratives uh, in a multi-perspective way, to put different narratives together talking about the, 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 the same uh, historical event so that you can compare, so that you can see how the other sees the same thing and to see how the interpretation of history could be so very different. Historical narratives are often merged into what you call a reconciliation and you said you're against reconciliation. Could you elaborate on that comment? Well, I said I'm against reconciliation because I wanted to promote the discussion, of course, but usually the reconciliation, for example, in, in ex-Yugoslavia, is just a political floscula. They're just using it, we are going to reconcile and doing nothing. So I think that what we need is a serious and deep process of knowing each other and knowing what our different notions about the past and present are. So it's not about signing contracts, yes, we are going to reconciliate. No, no, it's, that, that is not enough. Could you speak about um, the UN resolution you worked on and our right to history company? Yeah, this is a UN resolution and we are working on it for two years now and we have passed the General Assembly last year. So this is the resolution on the right to know your own history as a human right, because in many parts of the world there are minorities, there are states that are oppressed uh, with, uh, without having the knowledge of their, their own past. And this is one of the kinds of oppression uh, that we can find in the world today. And it's also very dangerous for the peace processes all, all around the world. 